In just a moment, X minus one. But first, when you hear the hearty laugh and familiar voice of the great Gildersleeve tomorrow night, you know you're in for some hilarious adventures. Because wherever Gildy is around, why somehow things never seem to go as planned. It might be his impulsive nature, or maybe it's his incurable weakness for the fairer sex. But whatever it is, the great Gildersleeve is bound to keep you laughing for a full 30 minutes. Tune in tomorrow night and meet Judge Hooker, Nephew Leroy, Housekeeper Bertie, and all the rest of the friendly people from Somerville as they join the great Gildersleeve. And now stay tuned for X-1 on NBC. Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of a future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... X minus one... Tonight's story, Junkyard, by Clifford D. Simak. The funny thing about the whole thing was the fact that we had never intended to land on Planet Nine. We circled it and decided it was strictly a low-grade affair. It wouldn't amount to anything for a billion years or so. As commander of a galactic survey team, I couldn't waste my time on it. Then my exec saw this junkyard through the telescope. We landed. Took a look at a load of alien machine parts discarded by some other spaceship, and then prepared to take off for Earth. It had all been a waste of time. Engine room, MacIver. This is Commander Warren. All secure? Yes, sir. Very well. Count down for blast off. Engine room ready, sir. X minus five. Minus four. Minus three. Minus two. Minus one. Fire. Mac, what's wrong down there? Well, I, I don't know, sir. Brady, get the data analyzer ready. We'll have to correct for a new takeoff time. It's the first time I ever heard of engine failure before takeoff. Well, better before than after. Engine room? Yes, sir. What's happening? You boys ready yet? No, sir. Well, burn it, man. Get going. I want those engines started. Sir. What is it? I don't quite know what to say. Well, say something or I'll have you busted. We can't start the engines, Commander. At least I can. Well, why not? I don't know. Klein, put Klein on. Lieutenant Klein, sir. Lieutenant, what is going on down there? Is there something wrong with the engines? No, sir. I've double-checked them. Well, then let's get them heated up or we'll be on this godforsaken planet the rest of our lives. We can't do it, sir. Klein, suppose you tell me exactly why you can't start the engines. Can you do that? Yes, sir. All right, Why? Because, sir, we can't remember how. What? Yes, sir, we've forgotten how to start the engine. Lieutenant, report up here in one minute. Bring Dr. Spencer with you. Yes, sir. All right, Brady, where have you got it? Got what, Iron? Don't play innocent. You and I have been doing planet surveys together for 15 years. You carry enough dead weight in grain alcohol on every trip to keep you happy for a million light years. Now, obviously, the boys in the engine room have gotten into it. Impossible. Where is it? I got a few fists in my locker, but nobody's touched it. I checked a few minutes ago. Well, then somebody has got some in the engine room. Come in. Lieutenant Klein, sir, I brought Dr. Spencer as audit. Oh, hello, Doc. Did Klein here tell you what's going on? He did. How long will it take you to get these guys sobered up? I can't. Why not? Because they're not drunk. I tested Klein in my office. Now, wait a minute, Doc. Are you trying to get me to actually believe that these men, intergalactic engineers with years of hyperficient experience, have forgotten how to start the engines of this ship? That's right. You... You're serious? Dead serious, Ira. Something, somehow, has caused these men to forget how to start the engines. (laughs) 
There it was. It fit in perfectly with a lot of other annoying little things that have been happening to us ever since we put down on Planet Nine. It was to have been a routine exploration of a low-grade, uninhabited planet. Some routine exploration. All right, Klein, now listen to me. Do you have manuals aboard? Engineering manuals? Yes, sir. Take the engine room boys and study those manuals. They'll tell you how to start the ship, won't they? Yes, sir. Okay, get going. Doc, I'd like you to stay here with me and Brady for a minute. Okay. Report back to me, Klein. Yes, sir. Okay, Doc, you're supposed to be an expert on space medicine. What is it? I've never seen anything like it, Ira. Brady? Search me, Captain. I've seen them with space blues, alien psychoses, the works. But I've never seen a disease that could make a crew forget how to start the engines. Maybe it isn't a disease. Okay, what then? Maybe it's a deliberate thing. You mean they're faking? No, I know Klein and the others too well for that. I mean, maybe there's some outside influence. Doc, we've surveyed this planet from top to bottom. We know there isn't a living cell on it. What about the junkyard? What junkyard? Oh, he means that pile of rusty space engine parts we found. The boys nicknamed it the junkyard. He's right. Somebody put it there. Well, we know that another spaceship landed here. We know that from the blast marks on the rock. We know that for some unexplained reason, they took their engine apart and tried to put it together again. We know they succeeded in building a much simpler engine, leaving a lot of spare parts, and we know that they took off. The blast-off marks tell us that, too. What we don't know is whether or not they left somebody behind. Or something. What about that stone tower, Ira? The boys looked it over. It's just a pile of stones. They probably threw them together as a shelter while they were rebuilding their engine. Oh, that sounds too simple. I don't like that tower, Ira. Why not? I don't know. It was scary. It had that black look about it. The smell of death. I felt it when I walked past with Klein and MacIver. Well, that's the Celt in you, banshees and spooks. I still don't like it. I need a drink. Skip it. We should be ready to blast off in a few minutes. Engine room. Engine room. What's going on down there? Engine room. Lieutenant Klein. Daddy. Is that you, Daddy? Did you bring me a present? Daddy, I'm scared. Holy mackerel, that's Klein. He's gone off his rocker. Klein. Doc, I think we better get down to that engine room. When Doc examined Klein, he found him to have the mind and memory of a six-year-old. That's it, Ira. Something drained Klein of his memory. And that's as much as I can tell you. Well, that's a big help. Here's the manual he was reading. Well, at least we can follow this manual and get off this stinking planet. Could you hand it to me? Right please? here. Anything wrong, Ira? Is it all there? It's all here, Doc. This is the engine manual that tells all about the engines. How they operate, how to locate trouble, how to fix them, how to start them. Well, what is it, then? You're sweating like a pig. All of a sudden, I can't remember the symbols. Doc, I've forgotten how to read. I left the engine room and went out through the lock to stand on the outside platform of the ship. I looked over the junkyard where the metal of the rusted engine parts gleamed. There was a riddle there. A riddle we hadn't been able to figure out. Why had an alien spaceship landed here, ripped out its engines, and then put together a simple, less efficient engine and taken off again? And they had worked in an awful hurry, judging by the mess they left. Why? Why? Mind if I join you, Ira? No, help yourself, Doc. How's Klein? We've made him some toys. He's playing with them. I've assigned Mac to see that he doesn't hurt himself. Doc. Yes? Have you got any ideas on what's happening to us? Well, man experiences incidents, gathers knowledge, knows emotions. Then, as he grows older, he begins to forget those experiences. Forget that knowledge. That's what life is. A long series of forgettings. Here on Nine, in some impossible way, the forgetting is speeded up. It happens overnight. Oh, there's more to it than that. Well, I'm going back to my cabin and try to get some rest. Mm. 